What's up guys, He King here bringing you another review on this week's One Piece chapter 1040, 1040. Uh, yeah, uh, last chapter was honestly one of the best action chapters that we got, Kid and Law versus Big Mom and actually finding me potentially defeating her, though we didn't get the uh, defeat uh, status bar, so maybe this chapter will be it, and we do in fact get that here. So yes, this chapter is all about the aftermath of what happened last week, and we get the official defeat of Big Mom in this chapter. Whether she's dead or not remains to be seen, but yeah, let's go through these uh, one by one. We start with uh, the next cover page, Volume 4 of the Bloody Voyage uh, of Germa 66, called Bloody Voyage, if you will. A creature that science cannot overcome. And we get, we get, uh, you know, we got uh, Yonji and Ninchi, I think, and they have a flashback to how Big Mom defeated them. I'm curious to see how this is going to end. I'm assuming they are going to escape by the end of this. Uh, but surely they're not just going to be stuck in that book forever, right? And we start the chapter where we left off with Kid shooting that bloody railgun, wherever it is, down into Big Mom and it like shooting further down into one or down below. Big Mom's not dead. She's still standing. The beam doesn't do like it hurts obviously, but it's not enough to push her down. And she gets back up. Like she's getting ready to come back up. The crews that are watching are worried and terrified. And you know, Big Mom pretty much tells them that, you know, she'll let them choose their fate uh, when this attack is done. Tickling me, you can either give me 50 years from your lifespan or you can live on as my slaves. Obviously, these two ref don't refuse both options here. Uh, and Big Mom tries to take their lifespans, uh, especially the lifespans of their crews who are there in the vicinity. And you, you can see their souls sort of being ripped off and uh, going into, I think, Big Mom. And she's basically regenerating herself. However, she's not being she's not able to take law and kids because they're not afraid, I think. Um I'm a bit confused in that. Like you you think the last gasps of an old windbag scare me. And and, and, and and that's kids saying that, and then you got Law just saying our room, your death screeches are doing my ears in. Um and yeah, she's like, their souls aren't coming out. Uh, she's an emperor, they're not scared at all. And we we get this uh, moment of, what's her name? Is it Hera? No, it's Mo Mother Caramel? Who is this? I think it's Hera. I think it's called Hera. Uh, Big Mom tries to use uh, one of that Hera homie, whatever, to attack Law. But obviously that doesn't do anything. Kid and Law just giving the smack down, giving the, you know, the, the sus uh, talk to her. And Lord does something. He do, he puts this dome around her, and he says, and he calls it silence. So it blocks out all noise. Big Mom can't make any sound. You know, she's talking. I think I think basically he stopped. Uh, he's done something to stop Big Mom from giving orders to the homies. So now she can't give any orders. Now she can't talk back. She's stuck in this barrier, and. Yeah, Kid, Kid ends up uh, pushing that barrier down. He keeps shooting, he's still shooting his laser. Ping point, freaking accuracy, laser going right through. And she's calling out, Prometheus, Hera, what are you doing? Come help me. They can't hear her, so they can't come for her help. And Big Mom goes right down the freaking, you know, uh, Onigashima castle, if you will. And she comes down to where, you know, Yamato and the bombs are. And a Big Mom, like, nothing, nothing I touch makes a sound. And Big Bob ends up putting a hand out of that freaking barrier and, you know, literally punches into or grabs into one of the icy frozen bombs, which explodes. But thankfully, it's only one bomb and it's not enough to destroy the, uh, you know, to destroy, you know, the castle, the, the hideout, the HQ, if you will. Um, but it does cause some damage. The fire demon is still there. We get this overview shot, this uh, exterior shot of Onogashima slightly blowing up. Uh, Mononosuke has created these cloud rings and he's trying to pull Onogashima back. Uh, Big Mom, like, caught in that explosion, coughing and falling down. And we get this sort of, we get, we get this, uh, we get these multiple panels showing what all the characters are. While Big Mom is basically monologuing to herself. And, you know, she's talking to Roger, or at least trying to talk to Roger. And, 
you know, he, she blames him for all of this that's happened. She blames him for the error, for him screaming out that the One Piece is real and to, and starting this new pirate era, if you will, and making all these youths, all this new blood basically coming out and fighting them. And she's wondering to herself whether or not the One Piece is real. And, uh, you know, she wants to know. She wants to know what it is, which is, which is the very opposite of Whitebeard. You know, Whitebeard... Roger was willing to tell Whitebeard what the One Piece was, and Whitebeard was like, nah, I don't want to know, bruv. It, it, it's amazing to show the contrast between these two different, uh, you know, emperors. The, the one who, you know, was Roger's rival, but, you know, had so much, you know, Roger had so much respect for him that he was willing to tell him what the One Piece was, and Roger, you know, Whitebeard was just like, nope, I'm good, dude, I'm good. And, and then you have Big Mom, this greedy, this gluttonous person who wants everything, who wants all kinds of species, etc, etc, who wants all the lifespans, who wants to know what One Piece is, but Roger never told her. Never, it doesn't even look like he even gave her a chance to tell her, like, that you can kind of infer the respect, you can tell the, the amount of respect Roger had. And like, this is a character who's dead now in the story. And occasionally we'll get flashbacks of him and we'll get characters talking by him. But just these comparisons, we just get this very good idea of how much respect Roger had for someone like Whitebeard and how much disrespect he had for someone like Big Mom that he wasn't even willing to tell her or even like ask her, do you want to know what it is? No, he never did. Um, I guess this is the same with Kaido. Like, it just goes to show, like, uh, in some level, like, Roger and Whitebeard were or did at least probably consider himself friends in some level so that's beautiful really when you think about it but yeah as we get that monologue we see what all the characters are we see chopper like uh and and these friends you know i guess dodging the explosions or the debris we see brooke running with uh robin behind him past the flames so i guess this confirms that uh it wasn't Brooke or Robin that uh, Zoro saw. Whatever that death figure was he saw was most likely death itself because we see Zoro here, he's fallen down and he's bleeding out, potentially dying. It, it looks like it looks like he ends up falling off because uh, uh, the floor whatever breaks apart and it seems like he's falling now, so... Wow. Uh, someone better save him. We, we cut to, what's her name, playing the instrument and o o Orochi is there, just like, yeah, like listening to it. I don't know if he's been hurt or he's been injured or maybe he's been hypnotized by the instrumental playing, but he's still there. We cut to Yamato, I think. No, sorry, not Yamato. We cut to Raizo, for Christ's sake. Yes, this fight's still going on, but it seems to have reached his end because Raizo is on fire. He is burning, but so is uh, the his opponent, uh, Fuka Ruji or whatever his name is. And he collapses and he's begging for water. I need water. But Raizo is standing there. He's standing there strong like holding on. So yeah again the comparisons. Because this is a guy who's pretty much doing what Older did as well. Like you gotta respect that. Older you know he, he, he burned alive in that Udo whatever while trying to save his retainers. And you know right now Raizo is going through that same kind of pain. You know he's holding on. He's being burnt alive but he's still standing and holding on while his opponent just fell begging for war. So yeah I, that fight is basically over. The fight with Big Mom is basically over. We got her falling down. Falling down. And we get this interesting line here. What is it? Where is it? Does, the, does this country hold some of the answers? It's so frustrating. So that's an interesting line. Does this country hold some of the answers? I'm assuming it does because surely the... Well, you know, the one of the road poneglyphs is here. Did we, did we, did we even, I don't think they've even found the road poneglyph that Kaido owns yet. So that's still uh, a loose subplot that needs to be, well, it's not even a loose subplot. It's, it's the main plot. That's something that still needs to be answered and done with. Kid Law, I'll never forgive you for this. You better not think this is enough to kill me. We see her falling down into the crater and... Yeah, there, there's an explosion. I'm assuming the bombs fell, fell down with her. And they explode. Now, it doesn't confirm whether Big Mom is dead or not. I don't think she is. I think she is still alive. I think she is going to come back up. Or at least she's going to be involved in the elbow fog. Uh, she'll probably be wounded most likely, but I don't think she's dead. But we do air... Uh, this, this fight ends with Emperor Big Mom versus the new generation. Live floor battle. Victors. It used to... It, 
a U Eustace, Captain Kidd, and the Surgeon of Death, Trafalgar Law. So yeah, they won. Law and Kidd won against Big Mom. The fight is over, and we get the shot of them two just sort of on the on the floor now. Kid on the oh, kid on the ground. I, I'm assuming Law just doing his uh, casual sitting down pose. Both, you know, injured, wounded, and exhausted, and their pirate crews laughing and cheering them on. And then we cut to Yamato with the bombs, and she's talking to Mononosuke basically. Uh, why, you know, he's, he's questioning why there's a bloody hole there, and where, you know, Yamato quickly explaining to him the situation, and we see that there's at least two or three bombs left that haven't exploded. So thankfully, you know, you know, to, uh, thankfully I was able to freeze the others before the whole armory blew. So yeah, uh, I, we don't we don't see where the uh, fire demon is. I don't know if that got taken out or not. If it's still there, but I'm I'm thinking that got taken out as well. Uh, it might have fallen down. Uh, let's just go up, up a bit. See. It, it just says, ooh, ooh, Orochi-sama, interesting. But maybe the fire demon got defeated as well, maybe this is over. I'm assuming Ayamato is going to throw the bombs down the hall maybe, but, uh, or maybe not. But we do end this chapter with something very unexpected and surprising, and something I think a lot of people have been theorizing about. Uh, I'm glad you're okay, I have a lot on my plate at the moment, so please listen. Z Z Zunisha, Z Zunisha is pretty is getting pretty close now. What? You mean the elephant Oda mentioned in his journal? Exactly. It committed a serious crime 800 years ago, back when it was Joy Boy's companion. So we get this Oda and his cliffhangers, okay, and his and, he, and his weekly cliffhangers, if you will, because this chapter ends with the with the revelation that we're that that, that One Piece is going to be on a break next week. But he always does this. He always makes sure to end on this big thing. And he ends on this bloody, uh, you know, uh, quote from you know this this talk from uh, Momonosuke saying that you know Zunisha was Joy Boy's companion. So what what the hell does this mean? I think what it means is is that potentially Zunisha was a Devil Fruit newser, and whatever. And this was like they say Joy Boy's companion. This was probably a friend of Joy Boy's, but you know, companion. It, is is Zunisha a, a, a female, perhaps? It, it, well, when they mean companion, when do they mean like companion, companion, or do they mean friend? What does this mean? And what crime did they possibly commit 800 years ago that she has to carry a whole race of people on her back? Or he's back, like, what's going on? Yeah, it's an insane way to end a chapter on, because now a lot of theories are popping up, like, so yeah, it, it, it is is the elephant a devil fruit user? Are we gonna get some backstory in this? I'm assuming we are. I'm assuming we are, and we're potentially probably gonna get some flashbacks now at this point before we cut back to the potential final battle between Luffy and Kaido. But at this point, all the main fights seem to be over now. Like, you know, uh, uh, Yamato has dealt with, or is still dealing with that. Uh, Rizal's won his fight, Big Mom lost. Uh, the only thing left now is to deal with Orochi or whatever's going on with him and finding out whether that fight even thing is gone or not. Uh, and of course there's also the, the the plot left over of who saved the scarabs. You know, somebody saved the, the, the red scarabs. Who saved them? Don't know. We, we still haven't find, found out yet. But yeah, a lot of moving pieces going now. Like things are clearly moving to a head, are clearly moving to an end if you will. We are getting to that climax now. But what a way to end a chapter, and what a way to leave off for a week, like making us ponder what the hell is Mononosuke talking about, like, holy crap. But yeah, great chapter, can't wait for next week's, sorry, there is no chapter next week, can't wait for uh, the next chapter in two weeks, and yeah, like, things are getting really, really tense and good now, like, I'm curious how many more chapters we got left until this arc ends, because... We need to come to an end now, guys. Like, it is... It is getting tiring waiting, waiting for this arc to end. Like, it's been going on for too long now. But yeah, One Piece, guys. Uh, did you like it? What did you think? Comment down below. Share, if you will. And remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, guys, as always, I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care.